Primo and the Spurs without DeJounte Murray in Denver last night fighting to stay in the play-in tournament. Spurs looking great early. Zach Collins with the steal. Keldon Johnson scoops it up, takes it the other way, capping off a 7-0 run. Devin Vassell knocks down the long three to give the Spurs a four-point edge. The Spurs would continue to play great throughout the night. Vassell and Keldon Johnson, he scored 20 to help the Spurs beat the Nuggets. 116-97. We love that. Spurs had six players scoring double figures as they won a regular season game in Denver for the first time since January 2017, people. And it wasn't even easy. Even after San Antonio built a lead that stretched out to 21 late in, late in the second quarter, the Nuggets cut it to four early in the fourth only to see the Spurs go on a 14-2 surge to regain momentum. So all the Spurs needed last night to secure a second straight playoff berth in the NBA play-in tournament was a Lakers loss to the Sun. So Phoenix obliged, pounding the Lakers 121-110 to knock LA out of contention entirely. As a result, San Antonio will, will enter this year's play-in tournament as either the number 10, nine or number 10 scene. Way to go, uh, seed. Way to go, guys. All right, Tiger Woods, as of now, says he plans on making his comeback at this year's Masters. Tiger has not played on the PGA Tour since November of 2020 and has since had to recover from that car crash in February last year that almost cost him his right leg. And even after all he's been through, he says he believes he can win his 16th major. I can hit it just fine. And I, I, I don't have any qualms about what I can do physically from a golf standpoint. It's now walking is the hard part. You know, this is normally not a easy walk to begin with. Um, uh, now, given the, the conditions that, you know, my leg is in, it gets a little bit more, more difficult. And, you know, that's, uh, you know, 72 holes is uh, it's a long road. And uh, it's going to be a, a tough challenge and a challenge that I'm, I'm up for. All right, good luck to Tiger Woods and the rest of the field. The Masters begin tomorrow. And time now is 442 and 66 degrees for now. Coming up next, several common products that you use at home every day are being recalled. We're going to run down that list. Our next airfare sticker shock. A first look at why some domestic flights are up 40% already this year. And welcome back. It's 445. Travelers are experiencing sticker shock as airfares are up 40% from the beginning of the year. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, skyrocketing airfares. We do expect airfare to continue to rise all the way into June. According to Hopper.com, domestic flights are up 40% for the beginning of the year, now averaging $330 round trip. At international trips, $810. Experts say you may want to consider booking that summer trip now. But remember, there are still deals to be had. Just because average flights are getting a little bit more expensive doesn't mean that this is the end of cheap flights. On the contrary, we are still living in the golden age of cheap flights. And it's important not to lose sight of the fact that airfare is way, way down over the past decade. So how can you get the flight you want without breaking the bank? We'll have the expert tips coming up at 7 a.m. With this GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Well, from Disney branded hand sanitizers to a popular deodorant, some products you and your family may use are being recalled. Well, on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has our recall roundup. Hand sanitizers with Mickey or Yoda on the label are recalled. Best brands, consumer products imported them. FDA testing found methanol in the Mickey Mouse product and benzene, a cancer-causing chemical, in the Mandalorian product. The biggest risk is children ingesting them. If you have these, throw them out. Deodorant danger. Unilever is recalling two suave aerosol antiperspirants. These are the 24-hour protection products. Elevated levels of benzene, again a carcinogen, were found in some samples. The company no longer makes these, but if you have them, throw them out. Alarm alert. Universal Security Instruments is recalling thousands of combination smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. They can fail to alert people to hazardous CO2 levels. Two models are affected. Contact the company for a replacement. 
And Parent Alert. Play Monster is recalling some 9,000 Kid O. Hudson glow rattles. They're motion activated toy puppies. Problem is, the puppy's legs can break off. That's a choking danger. You can contact the company to get your $25 back. If you need any more information, like model numbers, on any of these products, it's on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 447, I saw an incident on the northwest side a little bit earlier, 1604 at House, but the flashing lights appeared to have moved on, moved on out there. Well, that's good news. That is great news. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it, Seth? It is. Uh, another great day for Fiesta. And it feels noticeably drier out there this morning, Mike Street. Is it me? Am I crazy? Or no, Well, you're crazy, yes, but yes, it is drier <laughs> out there. I teed uh, it up. I was waiting for him to hit it off the... Yeah. A hanging curveball, you got to hit it out of, of the park. Course. So, uh, yes, we do have some lower humidity, and it's really going to be dropping down. Windy conditions, and, of course, that spells... Uh, high fire danger out there. You haven't seen beautiful until you've seen a Texas sunset. Can't argue with that one. That's a great view out there. Thank you very much. Did you see the old bathtub out there in the, in the background, too? Oh, a place no, to kind of hang was, out? And your windmill. The, uh -huh. the windmill. Yeah. Well, that's just about as idyllic as it gets, Mike. That's like a dream backyard for you. It's nice. Or for anybody. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Where do they live? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> we'll be over this weekend. Uh, we do have uh, mostly clear skies as of right now. And yeah, it's very, like we said, still out there. Very calm, very pleasant. The humidity is, well, when you're below 60, very comfortable out there, but these numbers are really going to be dropping down as the day rolls on right now. And we were just talking about how, yes, it is lower humidity than at this time yesterday morning. These dew points are down about uh, 15 degrees on average compared to what they were yesterday. And notice how way out to the west, dew points are down about 30 degrees. That's the drier air that's going to be coming on in here later on this morning. So here's what goes on about 8 o'clock or so is when that front's going to move on through here. Wind picks up. The drier air comes on in here, and yes, it will be very comfortable. It's going to cool down quickly tonight as well as tomorrow night with, and again, some of these dew point temperatures, it's very rare to see it this low this time of the year. Dew points down to about 11, like the low teens around here. That's going to be the case again throughout tomorrow night and then into a Friday morning as well. Clear skies, dry air, that allows temperatures to really drop down, and so that's why we are going to be looking at some chilly mornings the next couple of mornings. This morning, will drop into the low 60s and the wind will then start to uh, definitely pick up throughout the morning hours and will warm up pretty nicely up to uh, 72 at 11 o'clock, 74 by noon. Wind about 20, 25 miles per hour gusting on top of that. We top off at then 80 later on, 82, pardon me, later on today. But of course, the red flag warning then goes into effect at 10 o'clock up until 8 o'clock for the entire area. And then on top of that, we do have the wind advisory that starts this morning, even before the red flag warning. So when those winds do pick up and that's up until, excuse me, 3 p.m. later on this afternoon. As far as the humidity, like I said, dew points are going to continue to drop down the next couple of mornings, allowing for chilly mornings. We're going to be down in the mid and lower 40s here in town. So we're looking at 30s in parts of the hill country by uh, tomorrow morning, probably at least on Friday morning, as well as maybe even Saturday. Friday morning for the, the start of the parade, the Battle of Flowers. Yeah, you'll need a jacket because uh, 9 o'clock temperatures are only going to be in about the mid to upper 40s starting off. It'll warm up nicely throughout the day. Going into the uh, the rest of today, nothing but uh, clear skies. Same thing the next couple of days. We've got a great, great rest of Fiesta. Fire danger notwithstanding, that's the situation today as well as tomorrow. And then once we get into Sunday, we're going to have some more clouds around here. Humidity comes back in and then we go into Monday and we'll start to have a couple of showers around here and also some rain chances. It looks like by Tuesday as well, maybe even Wednesday. So keep your fingers crossed for that. 74 degrees today at noon, sunny, windy conditions and then a high temperature up to 82 today. Again, it's going to stay windy and stay breezy into the evening hours as well and cool down you know, fairly quickly. So if you are heading out to uh, Niosa or any other events for Fiesta tonight. Light little jacket and that's going to be the case the next couple of evenings. Windy again tomorrow. High fire danger again tomorrow. Look at that 44 Friday morning. Are you two ready? 44. Yes, we are. <laughs> the two it keeps going down by a degree <laughs> or two. Yeah, and then uh, Sunday, a lot more clouds, more humidity and a couple of showers are going to be possible. And then Monday, Tuesday, Small chance for some rain, much more humid, fairly warm next week. Wow, and another kind of calendar alert that pops there on Sunday, Mike mm -hmm. Osterhage. Mm -hmm. Around the corner. Yep, Palm Sunday. Okay. All right, we'll have our jackets ready for Friday morning.
That would be so weird. Battle of Flowers starting out wearing a jacket. 452, about 66 degrees. And coming up next, a big announcement from country artist Miranda Lambert, plus a popular show on FX is renewed for a sixth season. Your pick three numbers this morning, 649, Fireball 8. Daily four numbers, 1663, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 11, 14, 17, 28, 31. And your Mega Millions, 22, 43, 60, 63, 64, Mega Ball 18, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. Another country artist is taking up residency in Las Vegas, plus Netflix's Bridgerton is setting records. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Miranda Lambert is heading to Las Vegas. Look for Miranda Lambert to go wild in her just announced Las Vegas residency. She tells us she's meeting with her team this week to work out what we'll see, but notes she's never done a wardrobe change during a show before or had pyrotechnics. And she's excited to do both because it's Vegas. It's got to be taken up a notch or seven. <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. And I'm it's out of my comfort zone, but in a, but I get to be so creative and part of this process of building this show around certain moments in my career. Her Velvet Rodeo residency debuts at Planet Hollywood in September. Anthony will need all the help he can get. Season two of Bridgerton is record breaking. The Netflix Regency era drama set a record for most viewed English language TV show in a week on the streaming service. 251.74 million hours watched in the season's second week. But when you count all languages, you have to hold your ground. Squid Game is still the champ with more than double Bridgerton's hours watched. We're glad you got your own dreams. FX's Snowfall has been renewed for a sixth season, but it'll be the last for the drug drama. Season five is airing right now and streaming next day on Hulu. And a big happy birthday to a small superhero. Ant-Man star Paul Rudd is 53 today. While Star Wars star and all-around king of cool, Billy D. Williams turns 85. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 457 and 66 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, how the U.S., Australia, and U.K. are joining forces to work together on hypersonic weapons to help Ukraine fight back against Russia. And we're going to tell you about some big updates Google is making to its maps that will make finding your way to your destination just a little easier and maybe cheaper. Steve Cavazos is now in the studio and scanning the cameras around town to see what's up with traffic as we take a live look at 37 Houston and the Alamo Dome lit up on an early Wednesday morning. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. President Biden is set to announce new sanctions against Russia as more disturbing images emerge from Ukraine. The latest coming up. It's another good news, bad news morning. Good news, it is beautiful out there this morning. Very pleasant temperatures, low humidity. The bad news, the fire danger remains at a critical phase later today. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, April 6th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, let's go ahead and check in with Mike about that fire danger. Yeah, not only today, but also tomorrow. So the fire weather watch for tomorrow has already been issued. And today the wind is going to start to pick up later on this morning. And the uh, fire danger is going to go into uh, effect or really start to, to be high by later on this morning. 67 degrees right now. That dew point, the bottom number there is at 54. So it's, it's pleasant out there, not bone dry air, but it is comfortable and there's not much of a breeze. So it's very, very kind of still outside right now. And then it's going to be uh, in the next, so oh, probably about three hours when the wind really starts to pick up. We're going to make it up to 82. So a whole lot lower than yesterday's record setting 95 degrees. Yeah, it was hot out there yesterday and the aquifer dropped down six tenths of a foot. The allergens, a whole bunch of oak. If you park your car underneath an oak tree, it will change colors before your eyes with all that yellow dust out there. As far as the uh, fire danger, red flag warning again remains uh, or is been issued and goes into effect at 10 o'clock this morning up until 8 o'clock tonight. Just please put off any sort of outdoor burning whatsoever. And on top of that, the wind advisory that actually goes into effect earlier this morning, right around 7 o'clock as that uh, front in it's going to start to work its way through the area. I think here in town, we'll see, really see the wind shift about uh, 8 o'clock this morning. But again, for 
basically all of the area the uh, wind advisory is in effect. As, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as uh, Fiesta is concerned, it's going to be fantastic other than the wind. We get up to 82 again for a high temperature later on today. And if you're going to be out tonight, um, perhaps even a light jacket or something for later on in the evening because temperatures are going to be cooling into the about uh, mid 60s. And if you want to talk about cool the next couple of mornings, downright chilly details on that and look ahead to the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority mr Vasos, morning sir what's going on hey good morning mike uh, well we are off to a pretty decent start on the roadways let's get a look around town there's 37 at houston you can see light traffic and pretty much virtually nothing happening there off 1604 at old hosman but we are seeing some folks getting their morning started us 90 at montgomery now there is some road work that has led to a partial closure in those westbound lanes we're going to get to that a little bit later on but let's go ahead and get a quick look around town 35 north at loop 410. Just a few folks out there. So if you have to head out the door in the next few moments, nothing big is going to impede your commute right now. US 90 eastbound though at loop 410. There was a crash that was reported there a little bit earlier this morning. Thankfully that has cleared out. So no need to worry if you're traveling in those eastbound lanes coming in from Castroville to downtown San Antonio. Let's get a wide look at the map right now because again, no slow dance have been picked up just yet. 503 again, we are in great shape as we're getting this new day started. If you're traveling into San Antonio, no need to rush out the door either 25 minutes. If you are traveling in from I-10 eastbound Bernie to downtown 27 on 281 southbound from Bulverde and 26 traveling from 35 in those southbound lanes from New Braunfels. Again, no need to worry, but as I mentioned, there is some construction that has led to some closures. We're going to get to that coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, some people had to be rescued from a west side apartment overnight following a crash involving a San Antonio fire truck. This happened just after 1030 last night at Hillcrest and West Quill near Bandera Road. San Antonio Fire Chief says firefighters responding to a fire on Calabria when a silver car crashed right into the fire truck. It sent the truck into the apartment building, taking out stairs to a second floor and damaging a balcony. The chief says some people living there had to be laddered down from the second floor. About 17 residents will have to be relocated. No one was hurt. And we are learning more about the deadly shootings in Seguin this week. Seguin police are investigating four other shootings in the last two weeks they believe are all connected. Now, the first one happened at the end of March. The most recent shootings happening just yesterday. In that shooting, an 18-year-old woman was shot and killed and another man was injured. Police believe the shootings are happening between two groups of young people, somewhere between the ages of 16 and 20. Now, officers tell us that the groups are targeting specific people. They are telling people who live in Seguin not to be scared, but to stay alert. I would definitely say be alert. Uh, it's always good to keep an, keep an eye out, keep your head up, and be aware of your surroundings. And Seguin police are still looking for the suspects in the shootings. If you have any information, you can call Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers. The White House set to announce additional aid for Ukraine. We're talking Javelin anti-tank missiles and more sanctions against Russia. ABC's M1 has the latest from Washington. Russian troops are moving away from around the capital of Kyiv, revealing in its path horrific scenes of death and destruction. In Bucha, bodies lay out in the open. This civilian telling ABC's James Longman the Russian soldiers told all men to go outside to check their papers. He says if they were younger than 50, they were killed on the spot. He was 53. In besieged Mariupol, civilians are still trapped, running low on resources. Here, long lines of people waiting for food. President Volodymyr Zelensky in his first address to the United Nations Security Council since the Russian invasion, calling on the world to act. They were killed in their apartments, houses, blowing up grenades. The civilians were crushed by tanks while sitting in the, their cars in the middle of the road just for their pleasure. Adding the UN isn't carrying out functions for which it was created. Now, the Biden administration is sending an additional $100 million in security assistance to Ukraine, helping its military secure more Javelin anti-armor systems. The Pentagon saying the administration has now committed more than $2.4 billion to Ukraine. The U.S. also set to announce new sanctions against family members of Russian officials, as well as a ban on all new investments in Russia. The European Union reportedly proposing sanctions directly against Vladimir Putin's two daughters. 
This comes as the U.S., the U.K., and Australia announce they're teaming up to work on hypersonic weapons, the center of a new arms race with China and Russia. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Now to some late-breaking news. Police investigating a shooting in Northeast Bear County this morning. All right, Sarah Costa is live there with more. Good morning, Sarah. Hey, good morning, Mark and staff. We did just get this confirmed from uh, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. This is indeed a murder-suicide where one man in his 20s is dead from a gun self-inflicted gunshot wound and a woman is in critical condition after she was shot twice. This, is a this was a domestic violence incident. We are in Northeast Bear County. The sheriff said just after one this morning, a woman from this home in the neighborhood off of Hickory Ridge called 911 saying she had been shot. The call disconnected, the dispatcher called back. A man answered confirming he did shoot and intended to shoot himself. The dispatcher tried to convince him not to shoot himself. Sheriff said that he hung up. When Converse police and Bear County deputies arrived, they heard two gunshots go off in this home here on Hickory Ridge, which is a neighborhood off of O'Connor Road when they decided to force entry into this house when they arrived into they found in a bathroom a woman shot twice in her the lower part of her body and a man was dead uh, deputies say that they were able to apply a tourniquet and get her to the hospital she is in critical condition again this was a domestic violence incident they did not give us any other uh, reasoning of why what else led up to this shooting but as this story develops throughout the morning we will bring you those details live from northeast bear county i'm sarah costa ksat 12 news mark and stephanie all right thank you sarah 509 about 67 degrees and still ahead twitter has finally announced an edit feature we're going to tell you when testing will start and night one of niosa is in the books we'll tell you what's different about this year's big event still fun. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting today at 67 degrees. And Mark, you're not crazy. It's less humid out there. Thank you for the reassurance. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as we hinted at going into the commercial break, night one of Niosa is in the books and it, all around it was a huge success. The footprint of Niosa is a bit bigger this year because of construction around La Vieta. So some of the 14 cultural areas are spread out across Alamo Street. So the blast passes from last year have been brought back again this year. If you want to buy anything at Niosa, you will need one of those. Niosa organizers recommend picking them up from their office between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m so you don't get caught in the lines. You've got to pay for that and get it before you come downtown or you're going to be waiting in line and you don't want to wait in line once you get down here. And money from NIOSA goes to the historic preservation efforts in San Antonio. Organizers recommend using their park and ride options or ride share to make getting there and leaving a little bit easier. Y'all have fun. Be safe out there. 513, about 67 degrees. And still ahead, how Instacart is helping out workers who do not receive tips. Plus how a new update to Google Maps will give even more helpful details to help you find your way. We got this. We got this. I'm gonna check out the town, okay? We got this. 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 Life is for living. We got this. Let's partner for all of it. Edward Jones. New Polygrip Power. Hold and seal. Clinically proven to give strongest hold. Plus, seals out five times more food particles. Fear no food. New Polygrip Power Hold and Seal. More and more cat parents are feeding tastefuls from Blue Buffalo because it's tasty and healthy. Wow. And now Blue Tastefuls comes in single serve portions. Just snap it, peel it, pop it, chop it. Pick up Tastefuls singles and find out why one taste is all it takes. On the move, hi. Twitter has confirmed it's working on an edit feature. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. 
In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter says it will begin testing an edit button this year. It would allow you to edit your tweets after posting them. The announcement comes after new board member Elon Musk polled his followers about wanting the feature, but Twitter says it had been working on an edit button since last year. Instacart will now compensate workers who get stiffed on tips through a practice known as tip baiting. That's when customers zero out the tip after an order is delivered without issue. The company's new tip protection policy will cover up to $10 of the shopper's missed tip. Finally, Google Maps is adding more detail to help you get to where you're going. One update will show drivers toll prices along their routes and maps are being improved with the addition of traffic lights and stop signs and they may be customizing to your liking as well. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Exactly 518. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Hey, good morning. Well, thankfully, some of the issues that we saw a little bit earlier in the morning have cleared out. And if you're just waking up and have to head out, good news is you're not going to find any big delays just yet. 1604 Petranco, let's get that look around town. Light traffic and lots of pavement. So that's some good news for drivers that have to maybe get out on the road and head to work early this morning. But uh, we did have a crash, a new one that popped up. It looks like it could have been a minor crash off US 90 westbound right there at Nogalitos. It does appear that it's cleared out. So Again, seeing some progress thanks to our first responders who are out there. But as I mentioned, if you were with us a little bit earlier, there was some bridge work taking place here off US 90 in the westbound lanes. Now keep in mind, drivers, if you are an overnight or early morning commuter, this will take place from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. It's current up until Friday, April 8th. So we still have a few more mornings to go with this, but there will be a full closure of the main lanes at Montgomery Road. Traffic in the meantime is being directed to the frontage road. Let's get a push out of the map 519. We're looking like we're in great shape. And don't forget that QR code we're going to pull up right now. You can scan this QR code for the latest on closures in your area. And of course, all the latest on this traffic stories. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, thank you. Yes. And a nice day for Nyosa. Oh, yeah, right? it's going to be fantastic. If you are heading out this evening, um, you might want to take a light jacket with you. It's funny talking about that during the middle of a fiesta. Now, <laughs> yesterday, of course, was a whole different story. We hit that record high of 95 degrees, but it's going to be much different the rest of the week. Beautiful picture. This was taken on Sunday. Yep, just beautiful and peaceful. Thank you very much for that one. And this is going to be great next couple of days to just get out and enjoy the weather, but no burning whatsoever, please. All right, here's a look outside. This is uh, looking off to the west by the, cam the camera by the airport over there. And we've got some really dry air, not only down here at the surface, and it's going to get much, much drier, but also upstairs in the atmosphere. And so we are going to have just some beautiful, beautiful blue skies. And the humidity, which it's there this morning, it's not bad. It's kind of a, it just a, a still sort of a tranquil, pleasant sort of a morning, but we are definitely going to be drying out later on. We'll see the wind shift come through about eight o'clock, obviously sooner in the hill country. The dew points are going to be dropping off considerably and we'll continue to see much, much drier air coming in here the next couple of days. Yes, it is going to be pleasant. We'll have cool mornings. We're going to have nice afternoons cool down fairly quickly in the evenings. But of course, this very, very dry air that's going to be in place today as well as tomorrow, obviously, is then adding to the fire danger along with the, obviously the uh, high winds. So temperatures will drop down into the low 60s and then the wind is going to start to pick up out of the northwest about 15, 20, 25 miles per hour gusting from there. By noon we make it up to 74 degrees and again nothing but plenty of sunshine and very, very pretty blue skies out there. And then we top off at 82 and it's going to stay windy all afternoon and then even into the evening hours, which is why the red flag warning is in effect up until eight o'clock tonight for all of the area. And then on top of that, we've got the wind advisory and wind advisory actually goes into effect just later on this morning at seven o'clock up until three o'clock this afternoon. Obviously not much is showing up on radar right now. Maybe a couple of uh, clouds there on the satellite imagery down to the, the south. Those will continue to clear out upstream. There's nothing really going on around here. Boy, some uh, wintry weather up there to the north, but it's off to the southeast. If you're doing travel, uh, got any travel plans later on today. Watch it. Uh, anything going through Atlanta. And of course, there's always that snowball effect all around much of the country, but they're expecting some really, really nasty storms uh, in enhanced scale, about a four on the scale of one to five as far as the threat for severe weather. And that includes East Tennessee and then into a good chunk of Georgia and Atlanta as well. So again, if you're doing any traveling, check ahead as far as that goes. Now, next couple of days, nothing out there but sunshine and cool, like I said, cool mornings, nice afternoons. Then we get into Sunday, a couple of more clouds, humidity starts to work 
its way back into the picture on Sunday and late Sunday, perhaps a light little shower, slightly better chance for some rain Monday and that right now looks like it's going to extend into Tuesday. So still a week or so away, but it's looking encouraging as far as uh, maybe some rain chances next week. 74 degrees today at noon, sunny, windy conditions and high temperature up to 82 today. Great looking day Again, very high fire danger though. And tonight, if you are heading out, light jacket, Need one tomorrow morning, need one Friday morning. Definitely you too. listen up as well as Saturday morning, mid to even lower 40s, some 30s in the hill country, and then we get up to uh, 80 tomorrow, 81 on Friday. More humidity over the weekend. Steph, I can't tell. Is he talking to us? Yep. Uh, yes, he is, okay. and uh, we will definitely wear that jacket. You know, usually I don't mind that cold weather in the morning because I'm running, right? But we're not going to be running. <laughs> we're going to be standing, running. We're going to be running through a stack of scripts about right. that thick, and that's right. about it. But not running. We'll talk so. Battle of Flowers, of course, and then it looks uh, very nice for Flambeau as well. Um, all the festivities on Saturday should be a good evening for Flambeau, and then overnight the humidity is going to come back into uh, Sunday morning. So fantastic. Good news. All right. Yeah, that is great news. Thank you, Mike. Not, uh, 523, about 60. Seven degrees. And a first look at Harrison Ford's first TV series, plus the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation reunites. That's next in your morning spotlight. But first, you pick three numbers 649, Fireball 8. Daily, four numbers 1663, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 11, 14, 17, 28, 31. And your Mega Millions 22, 43, 60, 63, 64. Mega Ball 18, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. Harrison Ford getting his own TV show and some former Star Trek actors are reuniting. Here's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. I'm not at all surprised. <laughs> Big screen legend Harrison Ford's had a long career, but he's never had a lead role in a TV series. Until now. The veteran actor is set to play a psychiatrist in the Apple TV Plus show Shrinking. The comedy co-stars Jason Segel and is produced by the team that created the Emmy award-winning hit Ted Lasso. Ready? As ever. Captain Picard will have his old crew with him for his final trip into the final frontier. Paramount Plus just revealed that the Star Trek The Next Generation cast will be reuniting for the third and final season of Picard. The last time they all appeared together was 20 years ago in the film Star Trek Nemesis. Here's 30 minutes on 103.5 Don FM. Jim Carrey makes a creepy cameo in The weekend's new music video, Out of Time. The two Canadian stars became friends a few years ago after discovering they both lived in the same L.A. neighborhood. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. 527, 66 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, more dangerous weather likely in parts of the southeast and midwest as many try to clean up from storms earlier this week. Plus two big automakers teaming up to bring you a cheaper electric car. Are you ready to give away some more medals this <laughs> yes, morning? Yes, we are. We're excited about that. This is our Fiesta 2022 Fiesta medal and you can get that today. We're going to tell you when and where you can pick up those medals later in the newscast. Making headlines this morning, many areas of the country waking up to more wicked weather today. And taking a look outside with live cam, not as humid as it was yesterday morning, so we're liking that. We're at 66 degrees for now. Oh, it's nice out. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, April 6th. Happy Wednesday and happy Fiesta. The, you know, the celebration continues and the nice weather for the festivities also continues for the most part. That's right. Here's Mike Osterhage with more on our Fiesta forecast. Yeah, you're talking about how the humidity is lower this morning than yesterday and it's going to continue to drop down even later on this morning and throughout the day as we get uh, somewhat of a front coming on through here. Wind's going to be shifting around. It's going to get very, very breezy. Right now we stand at 67 degrees. Dew points at 54. So yes, lower than yesterday. It's, it's kind of uh, not just a pleasant sort of tranquil morning, if you will. Wind is out of the uh, west to southwest at five miles per hour. So not much of a breeze yet, but that's going to be changing in about, uh, say, a couple of hours, uh, two, three hours around here. So everybody is saying 
Again, light wind around most of the area. Then you go way out to the west and the wind's starting to pick up out of the uh, north and northeast at uh, 15 close to 20 miles per hour. And that strong wind is going to be coming on in here later on this morning. And so red flag warnings with the very dry air because the dew points and humidity are going to be dropping like a rock as well. So that's prompting the red flag warning to go into effect 10 o'clock this morning up until 8 o'clock this evening. And on top of that, a wind advisory that actually goes into effect earlier this morning at 7 o'clock. We're going to see some winds gusting 35, even close to 40 miles per hour at times around here. Oak, yep, it is definitely high. You get all that nice yellow dust all over everything, low amounts of everything else. And clear, it's going to be windy later on this morning. Going to have a great looking sunrise and then beautiful afternoon. But again, the high fire danger out there, we're going to see very low humidity. And that's going to allow temperatures to actually cool off kind of quickly once we get into the evening hours. If you're going to be out at Niles later on tonight, you might want to have a light jacket with you and then cool mornings down in the 40s the next few mornings. Yeah, it's going to be downright chilly and then beautiful afternoons, although another high fire danger is going to be around tomorrow. Very high fire risk and then we go into the weekend. Very nice Saturday and then humidity starts to return Sunday. Maybe a shower on Sunday, but a slightly better chance of rain first part of next week. More details on the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything big going on, Stephen? I'd say it's tranquil traffic so far, Mike. Thank you. Let's get a look at the roads this morning. 1604 at Culebra. Uh, now 1604 at Bandera. Our friends over at Trans Guide are trying to probably pick up a stall that was reported in that area. US 90 at Montgomery. If you were with us a little bit earlier, there was some road work, bridge work actually taking place out there, and it does appear that has wrapped up. So some good news, but uh, be on the lookout. As I mentioned, a stall off 1604 eastbound there near Bandera Road. We're not seeing traffic in those eastbound lanes picking up just yet. It's still very early this morning. However, check those vehicles before you get out on the road and make sure you move over or slow down if you do see a stranded driver out there. Let's get that wide look at the map because green seems to be the dominant color we're seeing this morning. And listen again, that's not going to be a bad thing if you're going to have to head out the door in the next few moments. But uh, we're going to see that trend continue here with these travel times. I 10 coming in from Seguin again, pretty green with 29 minutes at this hour. 22 if you are traveling in from 87 northbound from Lavernia and 28 minutes coming up from Floatisville. No worries there just yet, but of course there are still some closures to be on the lookout for. We're going to get to that coming up a little bit later on. Guys. An update on our late breaking news. Deputies investigating a murder suicide in Northeast Bear County this morning. It happened after 1 a.m. on Hickory Ridge Drive in a neighborhood off of O'Connor Road. Sarah Costa is there live with the latest. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. We did get this confirmed. This is a murder suicide. According to Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar, they found a man dead with a self inflicted gunshot wound inside this home just after one this morning, and a woman with two gunshot wounds onto the lower part of her body. She was taken to Bamsey where she later died. But we're going to show you video from earlier this morning. So, Bear County deputies said they got the call just after one. A woman from this home called. 911 saying she had been shot. The call disconnected. The dispatcher called back. A man answered this time, confirming yes, he did shoot uh, the woman and intended to shoot himself. The dispatcher tried to convince him not to shoot himself. He hung up. When Converse police and Bear County deputies arrived, they heard two gunshots go off. Deputies and officers decided to force themselves into the home. That's where they found a man dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound that he was found in the bathroom and a woman also found in the bathroom of this home. She had two gunshots uh, wounds to the lower part of her body, but she was still alive at that time. She was rushed to Bamsey in surgery, but died at the hospital. So at this time, investigators are still here on scene. They are processing it. Uh, spoke to Sheriff just a bit ago. He said they're probably going to be here for a while. Uh, the man who died from those self-inflicted gunshot wounds is still in this home and they're waiting for the medical examiner to arrive. Live from Northeast Bear County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you for the update, Sarah. Well, more dangerous weather is likely to hit the south again today. Most of the rest of the country will see high winds, rain or even snow. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, some states are still recovering from Tuesday's deadly thunderstorms and tornadoes. Today is about picking up the pieces for survivors of deadly storms and tornadoes in the south. But the dangerous weather isn't over yet. This video is from near Savannah, Georgia, where this tornado and severe thunderstorms turned deadly. Three hours inland is more destruction. 
A hundred miles east of Dallas, this is what's left of a trailer park in the city of White House. We and ran straight to the bathroom. And as soon as I got to the kitchen, the tree came through the house about six inches from me. It raised trailer up a couple of feet and blocked us in. We had to have a fire department come cut, cut things out so we can get out. The National Weather Service says this destruction is from a downburst of winds up to 100 miles an hour. Local officials say a 71-year-old man is dead after a tree fell on his mobile home here. Great guy. He was a cowboy and, you know, anytime he needed help, he'd help. He was the best neighbor you could ask for. So we'll miss him. Closer to Dallas, four people are lucky to be alive after this flash flood. South Carolina lawmakers took cover during a tornado warning Tuesday. 70 miles south in Allendale, people are coping with this damage. Today, most of the country could see high winds, rain, or even snow. Forecasters warn of more dangerous weather in the south. The same week as the Masters Tournament, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, and the Carolinas will likely be at the center of the storm. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Researchers have discovered genes that they believe are partially responsible for Alzheimer's disease. Now, of the 75 genes linked to an increased risk of developing the disease, 42 were previously unknown. To identify those genes, scientists looked at genes from more than 110,000 people diagnosed with Alzheimer's. They compared that data to more than 675,000 cognitively healthy people. Now, the study's co-author says it's a culmination of 30 years work. Scientists hope the newly identified genes will help develop treatments and ways to prevent the disease. The next generation of presidential planes being delayed by two years. Boeing making the two aircraft, which were due at the end of 2024, but the Air Force says that deadline's been pushed back because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Manpower limitations, design timelines, and test execution rates. The Air Force says the current fleet is airworthy but might need extra maintenance. The two new planes cost nearly $4 billion. However, the government could end up paying more than $5 billion when all the testing is done. Time now, 539 and 67 degrees for now. Still ahead to what you need to know about a new FDA warning about consuming raw oysters. Also next, how a local doctor is trying to find a cure to a disease that can lead to cancer. Outside with live cam, beautiful start to our morning and our first Wednesday of Fiesta 2022. We'll be back. Five forty-two years ago, a local doctor started a study on fatty liver disease. As the name suggests, too much fat accumulates in the liver, which in some cases can lead to cancer or even turn fatal. A research team now working on a drug to possibly cure that disease. Courtney Friedman explains how you can help. Fatty liver disease is the number one cause of liver transplantation in the U.S. today. And right now, there's no treatment or cure. Too much fat accumulates in the liver. It then causes inflammation, fibrosis, inflammation, hepatitis. Yeah. Fibrosis is cirrhosis. It leads to terrible things, cancer and death, et cetera, et cetera. Dr. Sherwin Schwartz is leading worldwide research on the disease right here in San Antonio. Rewind three years, we were in this very room with Dr. Schwartz learning how this machine helps scan for fatty liver disease. We asked for help from the viewers and hundreds of you showed up to get scanned. And we found, believe it or not, random people coming in, 70% of people coming through here had significant liver disease. Previous studies have shown there's a genetic defect prevalent in Hispanic people, namely Mexican Americans, that makes it more likely they'll get the disease, especially when combined with poor diet and little exercise. We found a lot of people with fatty liver disease. We found many of these people have the genetic defect. And now, and now we're working on the drug. It would be the first ever drug to prevent fatty liver disease. Where basically people will get a panel looking for genetic defects, they have a strong dose of this genetic defect, they go on this drug. And what the drug does is, it does away with the genetic defect that causes this fatty liver disease. The local team is in the early stages of research that could take years. So we need you again, San Antonio. Dr. Schwartz and his team are looking for more people to come get scanned to participate in this upcoming clinical trial for a possible drug to cure this disease. All of the information on our website, ksat.com. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. 544, 67 degrees. And coming up next, are you looking for a new pet? Well, stay with us. We're going to check in with the Animal Defense League. Puppy time. Julie's here from the Animal <laughs> Defense League. And who is this? You've got the, the greatest look on your face. Isn't he cute? 
Hi, this is Marvin. Hi, yes. What a great name for him. He's too, so, so cute. So we've only had Marvin about, I'd say, five days or so. Marvin was actually dumped in one of the areas where San Antonio has a lot of pet overpopulation. And just as a reminder, even at, at your place, any of the shelters, it is illegal to just dump any sort of it's animal. illegal to dump an animal and really I mean you put their life at risk um, we th that should just really never be done and especially look how precious he is he's such a good boy <laughs> he's only a year and a half old and his breed is so cute we think that he is actually a dachshund chihuahua pug mix he is just super super cute and loving and only a year and a half old I mean he's got a long and, life ahead of him yeah and he's got those almost markings of like a, a Dalmatian or, I mean, a, a Rottweiler or... Yeah. Yeah, but a lot, lot smaller. He only weighs about 11 pounds. And dressed up so for a fiesta. He is ready to party. And, and the whole city is, right? Because we've been waiting for fiesta. So we're really excited because ADL is in a lot of fiesta events this year. We are actually going to be in Battle of the Flowers in a carriage. So we're excited about that. Um, we are also going to be at the King Williams Fair. Mm -hmm. So I hope that we hope that the community will look for us there and come uh, find us, find our booth, and support us by buying our fiesta medals. You can also find all the Fiesta medals for ADL at all three of our campuses. Okay, the new one out there at the PetSmart over in uh, Windcrest, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have you taught the dogs how to wave from the uh, from the floats? No, okay. we need to learn how to do the, the pageant wave, right? We got, you have to turn your hand. <laughs> Poor dog. <laughs> He's like, like just pet me. About all the <laughs> things going on there. And to adopt, of course, Nacogdoches, mm -hmm. Paul Jolly Center out there in Windcrest. All the information, adltexas.org, 655-1481 is the number to call. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> And in your morning consumer headlines, the Food and Drug Administration is warning of potentially contaminated raw oysters. The agency is working with U.S. and Canadian public health authorities regarding a norovirus outbreak that has been linked to raw oysters from British Columbia. The FDA has confirmed that the oysters were distributed to restaurants and retailers in at least 13 states. Norovirus symptoms usually develop 12 to 48 hours after being exposed to the virus. People typically recover in one to three days. General Motors and Honda are joining forces to build a $30,000 electric car. The two auto giants say they'll also explore ways to develop new, cheaper batteries to improve vehicle performance and sustainability. GM said it will offer a compact SUV for under 30 grand as early as 2027. Honda has already said it will launch an electric vehicle and Acura SUV in 2024. Let's go ahead and check in with Steven. I didn't see anything too bad on the roadways. Don't jinx us yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're right now getting about maybe an hour away from morning rush, and we're seeing more people getting out on the roadways, 35 in Nogalitos. Thankfully, none of the issues that we've spotted have been causing issues in terms of slowdowns. We're just seeing just a few more folks out there and some stalls. Uh, this one is the latest to pop up off of I-10 eastbound right there at South Geaver Street. We're not seeing anything in terms of those slowdowns in those eastbound lanes of I-10. However, uh, as a reminder, move over or slow down when you see those flashing lights out there or stranded motorists. And again, we still have this stall that's been reported by TxDOT off of 1604 eastbound right there at Bandera Road. Again, just make sure you check those vehicles because stalls seem to be the problem right now. Thankfully, not causing many issues, but also make sure you plan ahead. Not too far from there, there's been some road work that's been going on for a little while now. It starts at 9 in the evening and wraps around 5 in the morning. This is over on the northwest side, loop 1604 westbound right there at Kyle Seal Parkway. We'll see that wrap up up on April 8th. Let's go ahead and get that wide look at the map again. We're entering the 6 a.m. hour with no problems on the road just yet, but it's still young out there, but uh, we'll see more people getting out there probably in the next few minutes or so. Guys. All right, thank you very much. My coaster Hage is here with uh, a picture featuring some Indian paintbrush. Yes. Yeah, your tie matches. <laughs> oh, it does. Oh, really, really. I didn't, even, I didn't even think about that. It's a gorgeous shot, though, of those flowers. That's fantastic. I haven't seen uh, Lot. Did you? I know you said you've seen some uh, blue bonnets out there. Any? Yeah. Big quite areas a few. of Indian uh, paintbrush. Kind of mixed in here or there, but uh, yeah, the the blue bonnets have been kind of sparse. Been more numerous, you know, outside 1604 in spots. I think. What if it's because we had kind of a dry, you know, dry spell? Very possible. So anyway, very possible. Beautiful picture though, and uh, right now it's going to be a beautiful picture when the sun finally decides to come up because we've got a lot of clear skies out there. However, right around sunrise or even before that, the wind is going to start to pick up. 67 degrees right now, mid 60s in the hill country. So we are definitely on the warm side of things. 
things. That's going to be changing because temperatures will be dropping down as we get this wind shift to move on in. Humidity in dew points are in the mid 50s right now, so it is pleasant out there. Not bone dry air, but not necessarily humid. But like I said, that is going to be changing. So we get this uh, wind shift coming through about eight o'clock or so a little sooner in portions of the hill country. Dry air moves on in here and that's just going to sweep across the area and we're going to be seeing some of these dew point temperatures which are kind of rare this time of year to have these numbers down in the low teens around here. And so what that means is if you are heading out in the evening, it's going to cool down kind of quickly and then we're going to have a couple of chilly mornings tomorrow, uh, Friday, as well as Saturday mornings with temperatures down in the mid 40s, even some upper 30s in portions of the uh, hill country. And that dry air is going to stay in place again all the way through then Saturday. Then we'll start to see a return of the humidity. So we will be dropping down into the low 60s and then warming up nicely. Wind starts to pick up, though, throughout the morning. And noon, we're going to be up to 74 degrees and then make it into the low 80s for a high temperature today. Still windy even through dinner time and then into the early evening hours. And of course, that's prompting the red flag warnings all around the area 10 till 8. And then on top of that, wind advisory goes into effect 7 o'clock this morning as that wind starts to pick up out in the hill country. And that's up until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then going into the next couple of days, nothing going on around there. Lots of blue skies, lots of sunshine. Sunday more clouds. Humidity makes a return Sunday. A couple of showers are possible Sunday. Looks kind of encouraging going into next week as far as a few uh, shots at some rain. And that's going to be Monday, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. Not anything sure thing written in stone right now, but at least there's that chance. 74 degrees today at noon. Sunny and breezy conditions. Then a high temperature makes it up to 82, which is about normal, maybe a degree or two above that. And then tomorrow, chilly morning, same thing Friday, Saturday, gorgeous afternoons. Palm Sunday, a little more humidity, perhaps a shower, slight chance of rain starting off next week. Well, all right. Check that out. Friday morning, if you haven't noticed the trend, the temperature keeps going down in the forecast by a degree or two. Just a little bit. Just chilly enough. Thank you, Mike. 554, about 67 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, six, four, nine, fireball eight, daily four, one, six, six, three, fireball four. Cash five numbers 11, 14, 17, 28, 31, mega. 22, 43, 60, 63, 64, Mega Ball 18, Mega Plier 2. Good morning. We're glad you're with us this morning. Coming up, the latest response to the growing evidence of atrocities in Ukraine. The steps taken by the Biden administration and our allies. Plus, with airfare soaring, how can you still land a deal for summer vacation? You know we got the answer. And we rise and shine in Arkansas, a homecoming for TJ Holmes with some big surprises. That's coming up right here on GMA. If you plan on going to NIOSA, we have you covered. We have the new layout and everything you need to know about those cashless wristbands. You can find all the details on KSAT.com. Having trouble losing weight, diet and exercise, usually big components, but head on GMSA at 6. We'll tell you about some of the other things you could be keeping you from shedding those pounds. And we'll check in with Stephen Cavazos and a look at your morning commute as we look live at 35 and Nogalitos. Bear County deputies are investigating a murder-suicide from early this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Coming up on GMSA, why deputies say it was a 911 call that led them to this house. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. President Biden is set to announce new sanctions against Russia as more disturbing images emerge from Ukraine. The latest coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at 67 degrees. And if you step outside, you will notice it was less humid this morning. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, April 6th. We are in a great mood this morning. The weather is lovely and our Spurs got a big win in Denver last night and some help from the Phoenix Suns eliminating the LA Lakers from playoff contention. Very exciting. I have to point out Mark's tie. Very appropriate for the morning. 
and very festive. It's also looking like Fiesta as it's, well. It's the best of both worlds for <laughs> sure, but super excited. So what this means is Spurs make the play-in uh, game now. So we'll talk more about that coming up in this newscast. But Mike is here with more on our fantastic weather. Yeah, just it's going to be beautiful for the rest of Fiesta. Um, but the downside is we do have a very high fire danger. And so. that is certainly a downside yeah. and, and something very dangerous. Not only today, but also tomorrow. Mm -hmm. the, uh, fire weather watch has already been issued for tomorrow. First of all, starting off this morning, got a lot of clear skies out there. Right now, it's just very kind of calm, pleasant. Uh, humidity is is not too awfully high. Temperatures are nice. Probably don't need a, a jacket right now, although you may want one in the hill country just because we will see temperatures drop down a couple of degrees before we start the the warm up. We're at 59 right now, Bandera, 68 Bernie State, 66 up the road in uh, Balverde and fire or excuse me, red flag warning for the high fire danger goes into effect at 10 o'clock this morning up until 8 o'clock tonight. Winds are going to be very blustery. As a matter of fact, wind advisories have been issued going to effect just in the next uh, hour at 7 o'clock up until 3 o'clock for all of the area with those winds that are going to be gusting about 35 40 miles per hour. Oak is definitely on the high side. The updated pollen count is going to be coming out uh, just after 7 o'clock, 7, 7 30 or so. Light amounts of everything else, but that lovely yellow dust all over everything. We'll drop down a few more degrees this morning, down to 62 as that, that front kind of wind shift moves on in here. And the winds are going to pick up out of the uh, north 15, 25 miles per hour and very blustery. And then a nice uh, warm up throughout the day. We will make it up into, come on, computer. Come on, you can do it for me. Anyway, we're going to make it up into the uh, mid 70s today at noon and then top off at 82 degrees. Again, very windy. And then if you are uh, heading off to Niosa tonight, might want to, if you're out there throughout the late evening hours, you might want to take a light jacket because temperatures will be back down into the mid 60s at, by about 10 o'clock tonight and cool mornings the next few mornings. Details on that. Look ahead at the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. It's been kind of calm so far, still the case? Peaceful, yeah. If you you plan to maybe head out and get on the roads in the next few moments. That's what you can expect. Some tranquil and peaceful roads right now. You can see 37 at Hackberry. We're not really seeing a lot of vehicles out there this early in the morning, but we are entering the 6 a.m. hour with basically no issues out on the road. So again, that's some good news for anyone that has to head out in the next few moments. 1604 Petrenko looking a little bit busier there. 410 at Callahan with a few more folks out there on the roadways. Get that wide view of the map. We see more green and pavement out on those trails. Transguide camera. So again, some good news for anyone that's commuting this morning, especially if you're traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton, 37 northbound, 28 minutes at this hour. 19 if you're traveling in from Highway 90 in Castroville in those eastbound lanes. 16 minutes, little time from Lytle on those northbound lanes, traveling up from 35. One last look around town, 281 at St. Mary's, 1604 at Bandera. The morning is off to a decent start so far, but there is still some closures to be on the lookout for, and we'll keep our eyes on the roadways. But as always, Make sure you do the same, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Developing now, a young couple is dead in a murder-suicide in Northeast Bear County this morning. This happened on Hickory Ridge Drive in a neighborhood off of O'Connor Road near Converse. Our Sarah Costa is live at the scene. Sarah, we understand deputies tried to save the woman. That's right, Mark. When they arrived to this home, they found a woman with two gunshots uh, to the lower part of her body. She was in a bathroom. And she was actually still alive. Um, deputies were able to apply a tourniquet. They rushed her to BAMC for emergency surgery, but she died from those gunshot wounds and her injuries at the hospital. But we're going to show you video from earlier this morning. So just after one o'clock this morning, uh, Sheriff Javier Salazar says a woman from this home called 911 saying she had been shot. The call disconnected. The dispatcher called back. A man answered, confirming he did shoot her and intended to shoot himself. The dispatcher tried to convince him not to shoot himself. He hung up. When Converse police and deputies arrived, they heard two gunshots. Deputies and officers forced themselves into the home. That's where they found the man dead from a self-inflicted gunshot. And the woman had both of those gunshot wounds who later died at the hospital. They are both believed to be in their 20s. Uh, you know, investigators are still here. The medical examiner just arrived to, to pick up the body of that man who shot himself at this home. So coming up in our next half hour, hear from Sheriff Javier Salazar, who has a message to the community about domestic violence. Live from the northeast side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie.
Thank you, Sarah. There has been an arrest and a murder that happened at Leon Valley apartment complex in February. Leon Valley police have arrested Laddie Jean Lee, the second for the murder of Shelton Fersner, the third. According to an arrest affidavit, Lee and Fersner got into an argument outside the complex. The documents say Lee then pulled out a gun and shot Fersner. So Lee confessed his involvement to detectives. He's now being held in the Bear County Jail on a murder charge. His bond is set at $250,000. The White House set to announce additional aid for Ukraine. We're talking Javelin anti-tank missiles and even more sanctions against Russia. It is in response to the disturbing and gruesome images that continue to come out of the war zones in Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky is pleading for the UN Security Council to act as the Kremlin claims the images are hoax. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest this morning from Washington. Good morning. In the suburbs of Kyiv, bodies continue to pile up in what appear to be mass graves. A human rights team is there investigating what exactly happened. Russian troops are moving away from around the capital of Kyiv, revealing in its path horrific scenes of death and destruction. In Bucha, bodies lay out in the open. In besieged Mariupol, civilians are still trapped, running low on resources. Here, long lines of people waiting for food. President Volodymyr Zelensky, in his first address to the United Nations Security Council since the Russian invasion, calling on the world to act. They were killed in their apartments, houses. Now, the Biden administration is sending an additional $100 million in security assistance to Ukraine. The U.S. also set to announce new sanctions against family members of Russian officials, as well as a ban on all new investments in Russia. This comes as the U.S., the U.K., and Australia announce they're teaming up to work on hypersonic weapons, the center of a new arms race with China and Russia. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Topping your morning consumer headlines, oil prices bouncing around before easing a bit by the end of Tuesday trading. The U.S. benchmark West Texas Intermediate closing down 1.3 percent at just under $102 a barrel. Concerns about new COVID cases and lower demand pushing prices down, but worries about further sanctions on Russian oil helping to keep prices from falling even more. Amazon is stepping up its plans to put a fleet of satellites into orbit to beam the Internet around the world. The company is securing space on dozens of upcoming launches. Twitter says it will begin testing an edit button this year. It would allow you to edit tweets after posting them. The announcement comes after new board member Elon Musk polled his followers about wanting the feature, but Twitter says it had already been working on an edit button since last year. Instacart will now compensate workers who get stiffed on tips through a practice known as tip baiting. That's when customers zero out the tip after an order is delivered without issue. Now the company's new tip protection policy will cover up to $10 of the shopper's missed tip. Google Maps adding more detail to help you get where you're going. One update will show drivers toll prices along their routes and maps are being improved with the addition of traffic lights and even stop signs. And the first night in Niosa in the books and all around, it was a huge success. The footprint of Niosa is a bit bigger this year because of construction around La Vieta. Some of the 14 cultural areas are spread out across Alamo Street. The blast passes from last year have been brought back again this year. So if you want to buy anything at Niosa, you're going to need one of those. Niosa organizers recommend picking them up from their office between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. so you don't get caught in the lines. You've got to pay for that and get it before you come downtown or you're going to be waiting in line and you don't want to wait in line once you get down here. We're talking about cashless wristbands, right? Money from NIOSA goes to the historic preservation efforts here in San Antonio. NIOSA organizers recommend using their park and ride options or ride share to make it getting there and leaving a little bit easier. And there's the music again. We are going to announce our medal giveaway for today. Just keep it here on Case at 12 because we'll talk about that later in the newscast. We won't keep you in suspense too long. Before yeah. 7 o'clock, for sure. <laughs> 610, about 67 degrees. And did you watch the Spurs game last night? Well, I hope you did. Silver and Black got it done. And now they are headed to the play-in bracket. We're going to have more on that a little later on GMSA. Fantastic news for our Spurs and Spurs fans. Just ahead, we'll tell you how a potential airline shakeup could impact how much your next flight might cost. And taking a look outside with live cams, 
less humid. We're happy about that. 67 degrees this morning. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It is 614. New this morning, a potential shakeup in the airline industry. JetBlue has thrown its hat into the ring to buy Spirit Airlines for $3.6 billion. JetBlue's offer could potentially spoil Spirit's agreement to merge with Frontier Airlines. Analysts looking at both potential deals say either way, the landscape for low-cost air travel would change and faced antitrust scrutiny. Now, just last year, the Justice Department sued to prevent JetBlue from partnering with American Airlines, arguing it would drive up prices and reduce competition. Consumers may be looking at higher air prices as we've seen the airline industry consolidate. When a merger happens, routes get cut, planes get put on routes that are more profitable. And that could spell more trouble for travelers already enduring frequent delays and cancellations. In addition, an increase in demand and skyrocketing jet fuel prices mean ticket prices are also taking off. Domestic airfares are up more than 40% since the beginning of the year, and that's only the beginning. Travel experts say if you're planning to book, experts recommend doing so no later than early May as continue, uh, prices continue to spike. All right, I looked at the roadways. They look okay from here. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, these Transguide cameras aren't showing uh, much else but pavement, but you see some flashing lights there, 410 at Callahan. We do have an issue that's <laughs> taking place out in that direction. We'll get to that in just a moment, but a quick look around town, 410 at Broadway. You can see that traffic is moving as San Antonio and our viewing area continues to wake up. But again, be on the lookout. Although we see a lot of green on this screen, we got to take you in here to 410. Now, I just talked to our friends over at Transguide a few moments ago. You see that slight buildup in the eastbound lanes. That's due to a crash that was reported uh, near the exit toward I-10 and Crossroads. So again, this is an area that we're going to watch closely. It's uh, fairly new, so we are seeing a slight buildup. We'll see how that impacts the morning drive as things start to go on throughout the morning. But uh, keep on the lookout. There's also going to be that closure taking place up toward I-10 in Kendall County. Three-week closure that started on Monday. Now, according to TxDOT, this closure will wrap sometime in May, but uh, be on the lookout. That does start at 9 a.m., what drivers that is can expect out there is the westbound entrance ramp from Bendera Road will be closed again for three weeks. And don't forget, detour down to the eastbound frontage road. And for the latest coverage on your commute and stories, of course, with uh, the early morning commutes are so important. You can scan this QR code to find out what's going on in your area. And that's pretty useful because that'll take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, it's pretty handy. And today, maybe not a jacket for the kiddos, but possibly tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah, definitely tomorrow morning, uh, Friday morning, as well as Saturday morning, because we've got some cooler, drier air that's moving on in here. And yeah, we're going to have some downright chilly mornings the next few days, perhaps in the hill country, a light little jacket. We've got some uh, temperatures down in the 50s this morning. We're going to drop down to 62 later on this morning as the that Basically, a cool front moves on through here. It's more of a big wind shift line. It's going to be very, very windy even later on this morning, and it's going to stay windy all day long. 82 for a high temperature then uh, late this afternoon. So very, very pleasant. Beautiful picture. Love this one. You talk about blue bonnets, you get your kids, get your dog to pose in the blue bonnets, and this is Riddick, one handsome senior boy. Just remember, Riddick, the gray hair right there is very distinguished looking, as my mother always said. So anyway, we're going to have a fantastic looking, <laughs> just in case he was wondering, fantastic uh, sunrise. Looks like we're already starting to see maybe a bit of the glow of the, uh, the sunrise this morning. Humidity is not bad right now, but much drier air comes on in here. And this is going to be as the wind shifts around here in town, looking about eight o'clock when we start to see that wind come in here out of the uh, north primarily. And it's going to be blustery all day long. And with that dry air moving on in here, you know what that means. We're going to be seeing a very high fire danger, not only today, but also tomorrow. And some of these dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the air, I mean, that's not even on the scale. It's kind of unusual for this time of year to have those two points well down in the, the low teens around here. So just some bone dry air. Yes, it is very comfortable air, but again, the very high fire danger. So we are going to be dropping down into the low 60s and then coming back up into the uh, mid 60s and the wind picks up this morning. We make it to uh, 74 degrees at noon and then we'll top off at 82. Good looking evening, but if you are heading off to uh, Niosa tonight, you might want to take a jacket just for later on because it will be cool cooling off, especially heading in toward 9, uh, 10 o'clock down into the 60s. Red flag warning is going to affect later on this morning. 
up until 8 o'clock tonight and also a wind advisory on top of that and that goes into effect even sooner just in about the next hour. Now as far as what's going on we've got this huge low up there around Canada that's what's pulling down this beautiful air and that's what's going to keep things yes the high fire danger but fantastic fiesta weather and really pleasant cool mornings, nice afternoons all the way through Saturday. Then we start to flatten out and get more of a zonal pattern, more humidity Sunday, more clouds, and this next low is going to be developing out there to the west. That's going to throw some moisture in here and give us the chance for a couple of showers. Don't get really excited about rain chances, but at least there is that chance of rain starting next week. 74 degrees today at noon, sunny and windy conditions, and then a high temperature makes it up to 82, and it's going to be windy, but really, really pleasant. And the next couple of days, yes, jackets in the morning, mid and lower 40s. That's here in town, so we may look at 30s in the hill country, and it's going to be chilly for the start of the Battle of Flowers parade. Never said that before. And then more humidity around here on Sundays, Palm Sunday, and a couple of uh, showers are possible next week. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. 620, about 68 degrees. And coming up later this morning on GMSA at 9, we're going to highlight this month's Educator of the Month. That's right. She is a teacher in the Comal Independent School District. And while she's worked different roles in the school system, she tells us she's really enjoyed her current role right now. We have that story and much more coming up on GMSA at 9. Faces of Fiesta is powered by Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Bart Simpson, King Antonio 99. Viva Fiesta! Meet this year's Texas Cavaliers reigning King Antonio. Bart is a proud Cavalier. He's even more proud of the work that the Cavaliers do to help San Antonio charities. All that I am is King Antonio. The love that I receive is just a reflection of the work that all the Cavaliers do. So it's really not, uh, it's really being King Antonio is not about me. Uh, it's about the work of the Cavaliers. To date, the Texas Cavaliers Charitable Foundation has given $12 million to local charities, but with hardship the world went through these past couple of years, the Cavaliers feel giving is more important now than ever. But well, we know that the most important time to give is when it's hard to give. When everybody's struggling, we just buckled down and figured out how to do it. Uh, so, so through COVID, we continue to give because uh, some couldn't, and, and that's uh, it's important for San Antonio and our charities to have that help. Along with honoring the fallen heroes of the Alamo, the Cavaliers also honored the service men and women of the military. And for this year's King Antonio, that has an extra meaning. I'm from a Gold Star family. Uh, my father uh, was killed in Vietnam and I was adopted by another military man who raised me. So I'll tell you, it's very meaningful to me. And his favorite Fiesta event? Well, there's really no surprise. The River Parade is what I'm gonna say and I mean it. But I will tell you, it's the whole, it's, it, it, it's a fiesta as a whole. It's a blending of our cultures. Like I said before, that, that makes San Antonio such a unique place to live. You know, if we were all the same, it'd be a pretty boring place. And we come together and we celebrate each other's culture. And that's what the Cavaliers do. Why hide your skin? If Dupixent has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixent, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent, a breakthrough eczema treatment. And coming up later this morning on Good Morning America, spring break travelers are experiencing sticker shock with airfares up 40% from the beginning of the year. That's coming up at 7 a.m. right here on KSAT.
Time check, 626, about 68 degrees. And there's much more to come on GMSA, including a dramatic burning car rescue in southern Florida. The incident all caught on camera. And the very latest on a murder-suicide investigation, Northeast Bear County, Sarah Costa, staying on top of this story, joins us coming up with a live report. And right now it's 626, but uh, we still don't have where and when. You have to stay tuned to tell, we'll tell you when you can get your Fiesta medal and what time and also where it's going to be today. So that's coming up later on our newscast at GMSA. All right, Transcad real quick. See how things are looking out there. Lots of flashing lights, 410 and Crossroads area. We'll check in with our traffic expert, Stephen Cavazos, after the break. A young couple is dead in Northeast Bear County this morning. I'm Sarah Acosta coming up on GMSA. What Sheriff Javier Salazar is saying to the community about domestic violence. And people living in the southern United States bracing for dangerous weather to hit today. We're going to have the latest. We avoided a, a tragedy here because this fire truck is absolutely totaled. Clean up underway right now after a car causes a fire track truck to crash right into a west side apartment complex building. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. And go Spurs go the silver and black take care of business last night in Denver and now we're in the play in bracket. We're going to have more from last night's game just ahead. Outstanding news, even better. It's a beautiful morning out there right now. We've got a plane coming in right side of your screen. The sun is just now trying to come up as we take a look at 410. And the humidity is lower this morning. The catch, Mike says the fire danger is extreme. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, April 6th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great Fiesta week so far. The weather's been working out a little warm, but still nice yesterday. Oh, yeah. Mike says it only gets cooler from here in the mornings and even in the evenings, right, Mike? Yeah, it's going to cool down fairly quickly in the evening. So if you are heading to Niosa tonight, right. it'll be nice at the start, but then by say 9, 10 o'clock, we'll be back down into the 60s. So maybe a, a light jacket, something, and then definitely you will need a jacket the next couple of mornings. This morning, we're going to go through a transition in the next couple of hours with the front moving on through here. Everything is, is fairly uh, calm right now. You notice the plane is coming in, landing up to the northwest. We've got a somewhat of a southwesterly wind right now, but traffic is definitely going to be coming in, maybe even just uh, on runway four straight up to the north with the wind that's going to be shifting around later on, like I said, in about the next hour or so. 68 right now, dew points at 57, so it's okay when you step outside. Not much of a breeze, kind of a pleasant morning. Now, with the wind definitely picking up, that's going to pull in very, very dry air, and that's prompting red flag warnings going to affect later on this morning, 10 o'clock up until 8 o'clock tonight. Please just don't do any sort of outdoor burning because anything that, that may start is going to spread very quickly. And the wind advisory actually goes into effect earlier at 7 o'clock this morning. Winds are going to be gusting 35 miles per hour, even stronger than that at times. Oak is very, very high, flirting with 3,000 mold and mulberry and everything else. Hackberry grass are on the low side and throughout the rest of the morning. Clear skies, great looking sunrise. Wind is definitely going to pick up and we're going to have sunny, windy, very low humidity. So a comfortable day. Hang on to your hat, however, and it's still going to be breezy into the evening hours. And then tomorrow, as well as Friday, cool mornings, then beautiful afternoons. However, tomorrow we do once again have a very high fire danger. Fire weather watch has already been issued for tomorrow. Going into the week, and Saturday is going to be fantastic. So great parade weather. Take a jacket early Friday morning, by the way. Great parade weather for Flambeau as well. Then the humidity starts to return on Sunday and maybe a shower on Sunday. Once again, tonight for Niosa, uh, temperature is going to be down into the mid 60s by the uh, end of the evening. So again, light jacket, but just beautiful evening. More on the weekend forecast coming up. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, anything going on? Uh, unfortunately, flashing lights here, Mike, off of 410 at Crossroads. We showed you this going to commercial break, but let's get a closer look from our friends over at Transguide. You can see that we do have what appears to be a fire truck out there, and off in the distance, it does look like there may be some sort of 18-wheeler that could have been involved in this. Un unclear exactly how many vehicles are involved, but let's go ahead and take a look at a different shot from Transguide. This one showing 410 at Fredericksburg. 
So you can see that it is causing some slow moving traffic in that direction, but bringing you right to the map. We're not seeing that slowdown anywhere else, but we got to zoom in here because we see that buildup happening here on the eastbound lanes of 410 all the way back to Babcock. So again, this will impact your drive time if you're trying to head in that direction, maybe in the next few minutes or so. We'll look for alternative routes in just a moment, but if you are traveling into San Antonio right now, no need to worry. Just 28 minutes coming into the downtown area from 281 and Bolverde in those southbound lanes again, but the problem is going to be here off of 410 at Fredericksburg. This is a view from Transguide and it is definitely causing traffic to move pretty slowly at this hour, but we'll look for those alternative routes coming up a little bit later on guys. Yeah, that ramp to 10 looks like it's completely closed off right now. Thank you, Stephen. We'll look for updates coming up. Thank you. And top story this morning. Domestic violence has hit another Bear County household, leaving a young couple dead and an apparent murder suicide. This scene unfolding early this morning over on Hickory Ridge. That's a neighborhood off of O'Connor Road near Converse. Sarah Costa is live at the scene and Sarah, we understand the shooter had a conversation with the 911 dispatcher. That's right, Stephanie. So the woman who was shot, she was the one that called 911 from this house behind me. Uh, she told dispatch that she had been shot, but then the line disconnected. Dispatch actually called the house back. Um, the man answered, and he did confirm with the 911 dispatcher that he did shoot the woman. She was still alive, that he intended to shoot her again so she would die, and then he intended to shoot himself. The dispatcher tried to convince the shooter not to do this, and then he hung up. Uh, but I want to show you video from earlier this morning. So we did speak with Sheriff Javier Salazar, who said just after 1 this morning, deputies and Converse police arrived at this home shortly after that 911 call. They heard two gunshots go off inside the house when they arrived. Deputies and officers forced themselves into the home. That's where they found the man dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And the woman had two gunshot wounds, but was still alive at that point. She was rushed to Bamsey, but died at the hospital. Sheriff Salazar is calling this an act of domestic violence, but has this message for the community. We would certainly urge anybody that if, if they're in that situation and they look like it's escalating, um, call us. Get yourself out of that situation. There are resources available. So the names of the couple have not been released at this time. Neither have their ages. Sheriff said they were young, though they're believed to be in their 20s. And just as we were going live, deputies look like they have cleared the scene at this time. Live from Northeast Bear County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Sarah, thank you. Clean up underway this morning after a crash ended with a fire truck into an apartment building. This all unfolded last night on the west side at Hillcrest and West Quill Drive. That's where crews say a driver in a silver sedan hit the fire truck, sending it into those nearby apartments. While no one was hurt in the crash, the fire truck caused major damage. It took out a set of stairs and destroyed several units. At least 17 unit, uh, uh, residents rather are displaced as a result. The one occupant uh, that was in the, the apartment with the most damage, uh, she and her husband and child had just gone to bed. So you can imagine if this would have been a couple of hours earlier or someone standing on the corner, it could have been multiple tragedies here tonight. We're told the driver of the sedan who caused the mess took off from the scene. Other stories we're following closely this morning. An 18 year old man dead and a deputy was hurt following a shooting on the far west side. This happened on Demia Drive. That's near Loop 410 and Highway 90. Now we were told the deputy was shot while serving a felony warrant. We're now learning the identity of that suspected gunman. Family members are telling us that the suspected gunman is Robert Inocencio. Deputies say he was dead when they found him after an hours long standoff. The deputy that was hit is expected to be okay. Now you can read more about this story on our website at KSAT.com. We're learning more about deadly shootings over in Seguin this week. Seguin police investigating four other shootings in the last two weeks they believe are now all connected. First one happened at the end of March. The most recent shootings happening just yesterday. In that one, an 18 year old woman was killed. Another man was hurt. Police believe the shootings are happening between two groups of young people somewhere between the ages of 16 and 20. Officers say the groups are targeting specific people. They're telling people who live in Seguin not to be scared, but to stay extra alert. I would definitely say be alert. Uh, it's always good to keep an, keep an eye out, keep your head up, and be aware of your surroundings.
Seguin police are still looking for suspects in the shootings. If you have any information, call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers. And the top U.S. military officer says the United States should look at the development of more bases in Eastern Europe to protect against Russian aggression. Army General Mark Miller favors rotating forces through those bases rather than making permanent deployments. The Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman says the basing could be funded by other countries such as Poland and the Baltics that want more U.S. troops. Now, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, who appeared with Milley at a congressional hearing on Tuesday, said any effort to adjust security in Eastern Europe will probably be discussed at the NATO summit in June. Today is about picking up the pieces for survivors of deadly storms and tornadoes in the south on Tuesday, but the dangerous weather isn't over yet. This is video near Savannah, Georgia, where a tornado and severe storms turned deadly. Meanwhile, east of Dallas, not much left of a trailer park in White House. National Weather Service says the destruction is from a downburst of winds that got up to 100 miles per hour. Local officials say a 71 year, year old man is dead after a tree fell on his mobile home. Closer to Dallas itself, four people lucky to be alive after a flash flood. Today, most of the country could see high winds, rain and even snow. And caught on camera, a dramatic burning car rescue in Florida. It took two officers, a good Samaritan, an extinguisher and a pocket knife to save the driver. You see the group scrambling to get him out. One officer fought the flames while the other cut the man free from his seatbelt. The driver was taken to the hospital and is expected to recover. A big, big win for our Spurs last night. The Silver and Black have now locked up a spot in the play-in tournament. The team would be without DeJounte Murray and Josh Primo in Denver last night, but no problem for the Spurs, who would have six players scoring double figures. Devin Vassell and Keldon Johnson each scored 20 points. Spurs win this one in convincing fashion, 116 to 97. It's the Spurs' first regular season win in Denver since January of 2017. But more importantly, the victory means San Antonio will enter the play-in bracket as either the 9 or the 10 seed. So the Spurs have just three regular season games left. They'll have tonight off, then they'll have another road matchup against the Timberwolves. That game is set for 8 o'clock tomorrow night in Minnesota. And we have to thank the Phoenix Suns for eliminating the <laughs> L.A. Lakers last night. Yes, thank you. They're looking good right now. <laughs> Time now, 641 and 68 degrees for now. And still ahead on GMSA, are you gaining weight and you don't know why? Well, coming up, why the lack of exercise might not be the only reason why. And coming up next, the not-so-secret location of today's <laughs> KSAT Fiesta Medal Giveaway. You're watching GMSA D. Back at 645, the number of obese people on a global scale has tripled over the past 50 years. That's according to the World Health Organization. It estimates that more than 1.9 billion adults are overweight and having excess body weight increases a person's risk for illnesses like type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, and even certain types of cancer. And while a lack of exercise may be to blame, it might not be the only reason the scales are tipping in the wrong direction. Bread's my, my worst enemy. I hit Dunkin' Donuts in the morning every once in a while. I eat keto ice cream, but if you eat a pint of it a night, it's still eating ice cream. <laughs> so your diet will also have a big impact on your waistline, but it's not always the reason people gain weight. Two different studies out of universities in Canada suggest plastics in household items such as water bottles, freezer bags, and food containers may contribute to our bulging waistlines. So one theory claims that chemicals in everyday plastic products promote weight gain by changing human metabolism. Now that the chemicals promote the growth of fat cells and alter hormones that regulate appetite. But plastics aren't the only culprit. Researchers found dieters who sleep five hours or less less a night gained 2.5 times more weight than those who slept between seven and eight hours a night and those who cut back half of their normal TV time saved an additional 119 calories a day. Watching just one less show could help you lose up to 12 pounds a year. Also, they say don't rush your meals. That's right. It takes 20 minutes for your stomach to tell your brain that it's full. And one study found slow eaters ate 66, 66 fewer calories per meal. That may not seem like a lot, but if you do that every meal, you'll lose more than 20 pounds a year. 
I'm a little worried about the uh, sleep part, <laughs> but yeah, that's we'll okay. have to make it up somewhere else, right? I, I agree. Well, it's time now for the moment we've been waiting for all morning. The secret location, well, not so secret anymore, of our Fiesta Metal giveaway. So here it is, folks. Starting at eight o'clock this morning, you can get a case at Fiesta Metal at the HEB at 6818 South Zarzamora near I-35. There you go. Remember, it's first come, first serve. So medals will be given while supplies last. You want to head on out there. Let's check on traffic and the latest out there at 647. 410 at Fredericksburg is a view from Transguide. Mark uh, mentioned this a little bit earlier. So I just talked to our friends over at Transguide. They did tell us that the exit ramps to I-10 and to both the west and eastbound ramps are closed right now. And you can see that here uh, from this view at Transguide. This is a view at 410 at Fredericksburg. Now it does appear that this is already causing an issue for anyone that may have to get their way through 410. You're going to see a slowdown. And again, you're going to start wanting to look for those alternatives alternative routes, but as we get the wide view of the map, you see a slowdown near Live Oak on 35 right near Walsham. Also seen a slowdown off 1604 over on the northwest side, but the big problem for me that I'm going to continue to watch closely is going to be right over here. Again, that crash off 410 eastbound at Crossroads Boulevard, where we see the exit to the I-10 eastbound and westbound ramps closed off, and you can see that stretch of red and yellow starting to build. Alternative route, this quickly changed because I was going to suggest to exit the Callahan exit there off of 410 and get onto I-10 that way. But but it looks like drivers may have to exit a little bit sooner, possibly Evers Road to get onto Wurzbach. That way you can get onto I-10. We'll update this graphic in a little bit. But uh, again, this will be the issue this morning. 410 at Fredericksburg, slow moving traffic. Hopefully Mike has better news. Yes, indeed do. Uh, beautiful weather in store and more great uh, blue bonnet pictures. Not only uh, maybe a dog in the blue bonnet, but the neighbor's cow as well. So great shot there. And boy, it's going to be a nice looking sunrise. Got some you know, the glow of the early morning sun is already starting to show through. And on radar, there's nothing being picked up as far as any precipitation. However, this is probably just some, uh, some stuff in the atmosphere, dirt and maybe some bugs and everything right along that wind shift that's starting to work its way down through the area right there that that line which is now coming into northern Bear County and we have obviously some humidity right now not too bad it's kind of pleasant but as that wind shift continues we are going to see uh, drier air move on in here the wind is definitely going to start to pick up as the morning rolls on and then we have this very very dry air all day long and the next couple of days so that's going to allow, well, not only for some beautiful weather, but also very high fire danger today as well as uh, tomorrow. All right, wind uh, north uh, Kerrville was actually had a little bit more of a breeze out there up around Fredericksburg winds right now about 20 25 miles per hour. We do have some there were a couple of uh, wind gusts Canyon Lake now at 21 miles per hour 10 Bandera so nothing too extreme as of yet. But again Fredericksburg sustained winds 20 miles per hour 21 up there in Ozona. So the windier conditions will continue to work their way down in here as that moves on through which is going to be about eight o'clock or so this morning here in town. Temperatures will drop down a couple of more degrees into the low 60s and then we come back up 74 degrees at noon. Plenty of sunshine and a high temperature today up to 82. And again, it is going to be windy. And if you are heading off to again, Niosa tonight, it's going to be a beautiful evening, but it's going to cool off by about 9, 10 o'clock. Red flag warnings go into effect 10 o'clock this morning till 8 o'clock. And then wind advisory just in the next uh, 10 minutes goes into effect for all of the area. And the reason for this beautiful weather, the windy conditions as well and dry air, that big low up there right around northern United States, Canada. We get this northwesterly airflow aloft and that's going to keep it very nice the next couple of days. But then that will start to change by Sunday and we'll start to see some more humidity moving in here Sunday as well as the first part of next week. 74 at noon, sunny, windy. And then a high temperature today again up to 82. So really, really nice day. Beautiful fiesta weather. And then look at that. The next couple of mornings, we're going to be down in the mid and even lower 40s. 81 for a high temperature. High fire danger again tomorrow, by the way. And it stays really nice through Saturday. So battle of flowers, cool start, nice finish. And flambeau should be a beautiful evening for that. More humidity on Sunday, maybe a shower or two. And per hopefully the first part of next week. Wow, just wow. Looking yep. really good, Mike. Yeah, fantastic. And nothing like yesterday's 95, which 
<laughs> was a new record. Oh, that's yeah. coming soon enough. We're, we're right. you know, yeah. Let's take another break. We'll just pump, enjoy the nice. Pump the brakes, nice Mother Nature. Yes. <laughs> 651, about 68 degrees. And good news if you are looking for ways to revitalize your home for spring. Tomorrow on GMSA, some of the top tips for spring cleaning. Outside with live cam, take a second and join us right now with a look as we see the very beginnings of our Wednesday morning sunrise. We'll be back. And in case you missed it earlier, you can get a case at Fiesta Metal starting at 8 this morning. Just go over to the HEV at 6818 South Zarzamora. It's first come, first serve, so medals will be given out while those supplies last. Let's get to Stephen for an update on a big mess out there at the I-10-410 interchange area. Getting worse right now, 410 eastbound at Crossroads. We see flashing lights and an 18-wheeler that looks like it could have been involved in this crash. Keep in mind, the exits to the I-10 and eastbound westbound ramps are closed due to that crash, but you can exit Ingram to get out of Callahan. That way you can make your way onto I-10, but not looking good right now, Mike. Beautiful sunrise on tap this morning, and we've got temperatures that are fairly pleasant. We'll drop down a few more degrees as the uh, that wind shifts around here. It's going to be very windy, very dry, so we have red flag warnings going to affect later on this morning, as well as wind advisories, and we're going to have temperatures getting up to 74 at noon, 82 for high temperature, and then pretty chilly the next couple of mornings. Again, congratulations to our Spurs for advancing to the play-in tournament. Yeah, very exciting. We'll enjoy this day and enjoy Fiesta. We'll be back here at 9. See you back here then. GMA is next.